welcome to Volleyball DNA, where we examine the characteristics that make up some of the most intriguing personalities in the world of volleyball. I'm Denise Lazaro. And I'm Anton Rojas. The subject for this episode is one of the fiercest competitors in the sport. But behind her extremely passionate persona on the court is somebody who really cares deeply about those close to her heart. And her drive for excellence in all aspects of life is what makes her an absolute winner. Our first guest for the year 2021 is none other than Bea De Leon. Happy birthday, Ate Den. Thanks, Bea. Love you. <laughs> okay, you know what? Um, one of the most memorable projects that we did in ABS was um, when we did a feature on you, Bea. Um, the crew went to your house and then they interviewed you. They interviewed oh. your dad, your mom, your brother. And that's how I really got to know who you were off of the court. And then I'll always remember what, what your family said about you. Like your dad said, you're a daddy's girl. Your mom said, you look like matapang on the court, but you really have a good heart. And your brother, like he proudly said that he's your biggest fan. So, ikaw naman, what do you have to say about your dad, your mom, and your brother? Alam na nila yun. <laughs> um, well, to them, of course, uh, about them. My dad, first of all, my dad is, is um, well, the man of the house. And more than that, he's always been our protector. And from anything, I've never felt... He's my source of strength. I always tell him... You know that um, ako feeling ko matapang ako kasi hindi ko naman I don't think that you'll allow me to fail. So I always tell him that. So in not just in volleyball but in life in general in my life decisions especially now that we're well I'm adulting. <laughs> you know, it, it's a lot easier for me to make bigger decisions just because I know that my dad's there and wouldn't allow me to fail at all. Um, on the other hand, there's my mom who will always, always care for us from the littlest things to giving us the food we like. Um, you know, she, she's, I, I think Atta Den, Den knows my mom. She's the most smart person in the world, but not in a bad way, yeah, but she's also the most giving. So um, she's very, very generous and very kind, you know, from the food that we want to once magusta namin, once we order something and we like her food more automatically salmon then. You know, she's that type of person. She's very, very generous. What's her and specialty? My brother, What's your mom's specialty? Sorry, I'm, I was just curious. Ash marami. <laughs> but my, fa- my favorite thing that she cooks, my comfort food that she cooks is her lasagna. Oh, man. Um, it's super simple. I mean, like, it's pasta, right? But I don't know. You know how some food, if hindi siya luto sa bahay mo, it's different. Just because it, that's how you know how it's done. Mm. So that's how I feel about my mom's lasagna. Parang, I mean, every other lasagna is good. It's just that my mom's is different. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And your brother, like, I mean, your brother says that he, brother, he's your biggest fan. My brother is the most responsible person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so without him, you know, this house wouldn't function, to be honest. Um, and Without him, because he's taken a, such a mature role, not just in my in our own family, but in our immediate family. So she's really um, the support that everyone goes to. Um, so that's him for me. He's my biggest support, um, and everything I can tell him, anything under the sun. He's also my best friend. You know, I'm super happy that we've gotten close to each other. Um, but he does everything and anything for me, just for as long as he can help me. So he's that type of brother who, who grew up, he had to grow up so fast and mature so fast because he knew that he wanted to take care of me and the whole family. So he's that type of guy. So, you know, anyone's out there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. But he's know, really that type of guy. I want to know, Bay, like, what, what's your role in the family? Oh, wala. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, well, to be honest, talaga, um, with all the bigger responsibilities at home, not much. Um, but 
I'm those I'm still the bunso kasi. So I I you know as any typical Filipino family tagabigay lang ako ng, ng happiness and joy. Sometimes sakit ng ulo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um slowly I'm trying to to get more responsibilities because sinakop talaga nila eh, because they really gave me everything um to support me in my career because it really took a lot of my time. So from as simple as um you know getting car service my kuya does that he's i'm that spoiled in my family <laughs> so you know um now rin that that um, have a bit more time we're trying to but kasi there time we really allow i mean in terms of my career ha? so you know um now it's just trying to look for where i fit also um in that in the bigger spectrum And But I love how like now, those guys are. Yeah. Family. Yeah, we are. We're very, very. We're a very clingy family. Um, <laughs> our rule in the house is that we always have to have dinner together, or whoever's in the house will have to have the meal together, lunch, breakfast, whatever. So whenever there's a meal, whoever's at home, even if you don't want to eat, you just have to be at the dinner table. And dinners here last for hours, sometimes four hours, just because we're we're making cuento. Wow. So, ganon ganon kami. Yeah, how cute! And I've gotten to know your family. They, they're so generous. They're so kind and welcoming. If Tito, Tita, and Luel are watching, mm. hello. <laughs> they'll, they'll for sure see this. <laughs> well, babe, we all know that you're a big sports fan. You love volleyball. You play golf. Mm. You played badminton, and you follow basketball as well. Do you have a sports idol? Ako, actually, when I saw that question, pinag-isipan ko. Pero growing, at least growing up, wala. So, I don't know, eh. Kasi, I mean, that's the uh, that's the usual story, di ba? That you, you grow up seeing someone and then you're like, oh, I want to be like them. But I didn't, I really didn't have one. More because I think I wasn't, growing up, I wasn't super, I didn't watch stuff like, I really was the type of kid who just watched cartoons. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't really see much of it. Though I grew up watching sports naman. So I, I grew up watching UAAP already. Mm-hmm. Um, but there wasn't... But that was basketball also. So there wasn't much of... Um, of um, How do I, I see an idol mm-hmm. um, growing up that I looked up to? Not much, honestly. <laughs> the, the reason why we asked was that we saw so many pictures of you. Like, there's even a picture of you playing baseball. Oh my gosh, I think that was just intrams. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, because now in intrams, you just play every sport. I mean, like yeah. in the batch, the right? So every other athletic person would end up playing every other sport. So yeah, ganon lang, yun lang yun. But that was fun. I I I really enjoyed that. Yeah, which is I got why punched. what you got punched? I got punched in the rib. Dragon or rough? But <laughs> the intrams is sure rough. Oh my. <laughs> All That's girls' cool. school. Yeah, it was so intense because I think that was a championship game. But for it was an accident, naman. She was my teammate pa in high school volleyball. It was so funny. Oh, so wow. I was running to third base. I was running to third base and from from my own bat, I think. So I was running to third base na, and then she caught the ball, and clearly I was already out the box. The lapa ka sa base, she already had the yeah. ball. Eh. But then I was still running. I guess I was in momentum. And then she tagged me like that. So I was like, oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> what a memory. Yeah. Yeah. With the, with the glove, ha. Huh? So I feel yeah. like, oh yeah. my goodness. Like, you know yeah. that moment where you can't breathe? Because it's yeah. sacto, sacto. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's why we asked. Because um, we, we saw that you have so many pictures playing different sports. And then... Um, I heard this story about how when your dad used to take you to the golf course and then the pros would be like, yeah. you're a natural. Like, maganda yung swing mo. So, that's why we, we were wondering, um, like, ano ba, sino ba idol nitong si Bea? Kasi parang lahat ng sports pinapasok na eh. <laughs> Well, no idol in particular. But the reason why I got into sports was because of my dad. Um, he was a... He, he wasn't so into... Us being so musical or or those acting workshops as kids, but he was he was a fan of sports. So mm-hmm. what he did, like instead of the other kids taking piano lessons, I took all the classes, all the sports classes in the world. 
So I took the first thing I learned was swimming because well it's a life skill so it's really what my mom and my dad agreed to make us do first but nothing competitive. Um and then yon he was into golf so whatever he was into he would just parang wanted to share it with me. He's the type of guy eh. like even with food he's gonna force feed you and say I want you to try this. So he's the type of guy to just want to share to want to share the things he loves to do with with his family. So there was golf. Um. In fairness, it didn't make me get into basketball, probably because it was tough. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he was, he, was, he was the one who would take me um, and enroll me to class. So badminton also, we did that as a family. So you know, that's, how, that's how I got into sports and um, brought out, I guess, discovered how competitive I actually really was. And, you know, I got into it myself. So how did you end up choosing volleyball as your main sport then? Um, you know my volleyball story is so a one big um <laughs> parang as cheesy as it sounds, parang meant to be. T T V H. Um well cause I got into volleyball. Funny, the first time I picked up a volleyball, I obviously I didn't know how. So alam mo yung first time mo, tapos pag ka magdig ka, babagsak lang siya. So I was already playing badminton at the time and I said, volleyball's probably the one sport I cannot play. <laughs> I clearly remember that day talaga. Um, and then, wala, you know how it started off in, you know how you have sports in PE? So there, I learned there. I was like grade or something. I learned there. And then come high school, I was a new student in Poveda. And then one of my um, classmates was part of the volleyball team and then just went, um, hey, you're tall. You should, you should try out. So I was like, okay. Um, so I did, and I had foundation of volleyball. I mean, of badminton. So at least the hand-eye coordination was there, diba? So yun. Um, I literally just learned there. Like the, the, the formals, uh, the form, the, the digging, whatever. All the basic stuff in high school. And then from, from there, I just stuck with it. And then little did I know, I'd play in college. And now in the pros. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I swear, it was... Playing college volleyball wasn't in my um, wasn't at all in my plans. Even until I was fourth year of high school, it wasn't a hey, let's look for schools to play for or yeah. sana somebody sees me. Anybody who follows you, Bea, I mean, who, anybody who has followed your career will will come across an article or maybe an interview of your dad openly admitting that he didn't watch your volleyball games ah. in high school. Did that motivate you to? Maybe like uh, say you know I want to show my dad that I can make it big in this sport or or this sport is something that people will learn to appreciate one day. What was it like um, longing for your dad to appreciate the sport that you uh, got serious about? Um, at first it didn't really phase me. I mean, like it wasn't the biggest issue. Um. I guess until I actually played for college. Because it's ba funny lang yung fact that he didn't used to watch. Tapos biglang he never missed a game. <laughs> um, and when it got big, um, pero it was um, it was never something naman na I used as motivation per se. Well, I guess actually looking back as a kid, my dad's very tough. Because as supportive as he is, he's very tough, and he's he's, he's well, yeah, he can be very. Tough, especially with his words. So, mapang asar. So, I'd come home from from my games and he'd be like, oh, talo na naman kayo, no? Like, ganun lang. Which is totally fine with me. Pero, syempre, as a kid, you can't handle your emotions. Mapipikon ka, eh, di ba? <laughs> Kasi, I mean, hello, I mean, I played for Poveda. So, um, it's not the best high school volleyball program <laughs> there is. Um, so, we'd really be, we'd really lose a lot. Pretty sure, like, we I can probably count more the times we we'd win than we'd lose. So every time I'd come home, it would be like, um, I uh, yun sabi niya, uh, malamang talo kayo today. And you know he'd he'd make me a sorry tigil man yan, parang la naman mga yari sa you guys always lose. Um, so I, siguro yung part that in me that was competitive just wanted na parang you know like. To me, I always knew it wasn't about winning. I just wanted to do it talaga for fun. Because it was something, like, my, me, my grounding on, on it was always the team. Eh. And I loved my team. So, you know, I always just wanted to play for that. 
Um, and I never naman used it to be like, let's be better at this or anything like that. Um, I guess nagkataon lang rin na, um, ayun, um, the stars aligned for me to, to have a pretty successful career in volleyball. And that's something now that's funny to look at. But it was never naman like that for me. Pikunan lang siya in a sense na, uy, kaya ko to ah. Ano ka ba? Parang alam mo yun. So, hindi mo pa nga, parang yun lang naman sasabi ko, parang hindi mo nga ako nakikita maglaro eh. So, ganun lang ako. You know. But never naman as my biggest motivation to, to get better at it. Well, be your dad, your mom, your brother, your whole family came from Lasal. <laughs> so, how did you end up choosing Ateneo? Um, I was obviously um, eyeing Lasal. I think everybody knows that. I I was I was pegged to go there. I think we all knew I was gonna go there until my dad also said um because he's friends with Ate Ariel's dad. So that's how I actually got to to get to train with them for that day. And then he said, try mo lang, wala namang mawawala sa'yo. So I said, no na, I want to go to Lasale. So what for? I kept saying, na, I don't, I don't want to go. Because, you know, typical, di ba? Parang, no, <laughs> I know, like, like, I don't want to, I don't want to bother. <laughs> um, but then, you know, I had to, I had to follow my dad because he already told Tito Ariel's dad. Um, I, what's it? Um, tit, uh, at Ariel's dad. So, um, I, I went and then I showed up. And being honest, um, mas welcoming ang Lasal. No joke. <laughs> I think you'd know that. Like when they'd welcome you and you're like a, like a tryout, they'd really be like, like um, they'd, they'd super be makulet and whatever. And Ateneo would just go ahead and um, train along thing. and do their own thing. W- wasn't Pero, Ben welcoming to you? <laughs> 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 she, was. she was, she was, she was. She waited for me. She waited for me this one time I had to get picked up. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, but uh, for some reason, I, right after training for Ateneo, I just felt that I belonged more. Hmm. Then it was just for me. Um, it was a vibe. <laughs> That's what they would say. Oh. It's just a feeling. Legit talaga. Yun lang yun. That's the only reason why I ended up choosing Ateneo because I said, I just suddenly felt na parang, hey, parang this is for me. Parang this is where I belong. And nothing against La Salha. I mean, like, I love it there. Coach Ramil is one of the best coaches in the Philippines, honestly. And all, I grew up knowing how good of an institution La Salle is. And I still have much respect for them. But, ewan ko, Teragang, yun lang, sabi ko, parang, parang it just felt that I was for Ateneo. Be a question. Uh, you said that um, your dad was the one who said, try mo lang sa Ateneo. But if he was Lasallian, why did he do that? Just like so you have an option? Just so I'd have an option, but fully not knowing that I'd choose it. <laughs> ah, so parang try mo lang, so, try mo lang. But, but siguro deep inside, said, since Lasal yan siya, he wanted you to go to Lasal. Parang really, ganun ba? I'm not too sure nga rin eh. I'm not too <laughs> sure if he just wanted me to try it because he wanted me to go to Lasal. Kasi the, once I told him, Dad, I wanna go to Ateneo, he got shocked eh. So, <laughs> so I was like, ah, well, you, you, you made me try it. So, you know, I, I'm not too sure talaga. Maybe he just wanted to gauge, you know, if somebody else was gonna be interested in me. I'm not too sure. Um, but um, the funny thing was, when I told him I wanted to go to Ateneo, yun nga, he, he struck a deal with me and said, the only way you're going to go to Ateneo is if you pass the exam. Um, if you don't, we're not going to bargain and we're not going to ask and we're not going to appeal. And then I'll allow you to go to Ateneo. Wow. Eh, yun, so I've never prayed harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which makes your... Fortunately, I passed. <laughs> <clears throat> yung yung sinabi mo kanina na meant to be now that you share that additional story I, I see that it was really more meant to be because of that that option mm-hmm. that your dad gave okay i want to ask you something though 
Um, there's this picture that you tweeted back in February 24, 2013. You were at the Araneta Coliseum wearing a LaSalle shirt. You were so young. And you had a picture with Michelle Gumabao. And, and your tweet, in your tweet, you said, one day I will play at Araneta with her in front of a thousand people. I know, I know I it. I know it, Anto. I know, Anto. <laughs> yeah, oh, why did you just cringe? I cringe. I know that <laughs> So like I mean, wala lang, kasi, lo- like, lo- looking back, I mean after everything you know developed, uh, man, do you imagine what could have been? I love seeing that pic, honestly. I saw that pic. It was it was cute. Yeah. No, yeah, because at the time, yun nga, that was I think I was third year high school, fourth year high school, and I was still being. And I was still decided to go going to La Salle. Mm. So eh, my brother was still in college at that time. And he's very, very good friends um, with their court side. Mich- ah, Michelle Gumabo. Um, Billy. Billy Capistrano. Mm. Mm. So, so, you know, um, he asked a favor from, from Billy. He said, Oi, Bill, like, my, my, my sister wants to become a volleyball player one day. So it's like, can she have a pick? With, with one of the players. So, oh, so yun, you know, she extended. That's, that's how that happened. So, si Billy pala that's nag-orchestrate. Si Billy pala and your brother were the ones that <laughs> set it up. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, she would she would go there sometimes when I used to train with, with La Salle. Because okay. my kuya would bring me. Okay, kuya kuya okay. would bring me sometimes. So, you know, she'd be there. Billy was there a lot. She was even there in my prom. Because he was... Um, Kabarkada with my brother, so they were that see, close, and that's how thing okay, happened. Okay. So now, so now every time I look back at it, wala. I mean, wala lang. It's just, it's just there. Funny lang siya. It's cute. See, see Michelle, the favorite grabe, animal. No, what could have been? Is Michelle your favorite lady favorite spider? spider? At the time, yeah. Because tap, mat ang tapang yun na eh. like same, mm. medyo same in the sense na, di ba? Mm. Parari intense on court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I loved I loved it talaga. As in seeing them seeing them on court also. So For sure if you're a La Salle fan, you'd enjoy it. <laughs> oh no man. <laughs> I was a La Salle fan. I, I was a La Salle fan at the time and I loved it. Si Den din naman eh. Di ba La Salle fan ka din? Oh yeah. Fair nung time pa nila Ate Ila. Um mm. When I was in high school pa. I think a lot of young volleyball fans at that time, or until now, wanted to go to La Salle. I mean, because it's La Salle. It's La Salle. Eh. They, they, their, their tradition of volleyball has just been longer in, mm. in the sense na, you know, they've Golden. Been, yeah. So, talagang, I think we really looked up to them. Yeah. Okay, Bay. We talked about earlier na... You went to Ateneo just to try, <laughs> just to try it out. You know, test the waters lang. Kasakali lang. And you want to thank, you know, Tito Elmer for that. You know, finish mm-hmm. it. And you ended up in Ateneo. But did you ever hear about Coach Tai's training? Your horror stories of his training. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I really did. Um, Weren't you intimidated? When I was... You're just gonna try it tapos sasabak ka sa training niya. Mega, do you remember that? Um, the trainings where you guys, kasi diba, parang when I started training with you guys, medyo semi-finals preparation in it. So obviously, Coach Ty would be very focused on you guys. But every time the water break ninyo, he would make me do 10 balls na spiking. Remember? Yeah. So, <laughs> yun pa lang. Yun pa lang, I was already like, Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Um, and then on top of that, um, Jamie, Jamie would always be talking to me on the side, saying like, "Oh, you should prepare yourself. Um, the training is so hard. Like we run almost every day, and it's timed. And um, we have this thing um, he calls one man, where he just throws the ball everywhere. So they really scared me. Their batch, and Jamie, Gia, Mitch was still there." <laughs> Anna, they were all really like, because they were the ones I could get to talk to a lot more because they were the youngest ones then. It was so funny. Talaga. They were really scary. Like, hintayin mo yung araw gawin sa to. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd, I'd be scared. It really added to the, the fear coming into training every day. And Ate then knows that, that I would sometimes cry before training. I yeah. really would. 
So it was so scary. But then yun nga, I think it was added talaga na psychological. Kasi nagagawa naman namin. But, but it was scary. And yet you felt like you fit in. Yeah, I think nga kasi like I said kanina, no? parang um, the, one of the things I ground myself on in the sport is the team. So I love the team from the very beginning. So, you know, I felt just like, you know, I fit in naman. And wala, I think kasi, you know, if you are, I think any athlete would have some sort of yabang in them. Well, you have to have some sort of yabang in pride. them. It's coming from your pride. Like represent- yeah, so in my head, Takot ako, pero in my head, I said, kaya yan. You know, like, you, you'll have to be able to do it. Diba? Parang whatever they can do, nagawa nila, kaya ko rin. So, you know, that was just the mindset at the time. Okay, speaking of being able to do something, so I was looking back at your five-year career in the UAP. You could have played a total of 85 games, but you missed three games, and that was because you broke your, there, that, that finger. In practice, okay, and and then then saw it firsthand, the blood and everything. Um, doctor said you'd be out six weeks, but you were back in two weeks. So how did you do that? And and this was during your title run, the sixteen and O title run. I mean, looking back, can you imagine? Like you're just one story, Bea, but you had to do that just so Ateneo could achieve history. <laughs> Ay, that, that, <laughs> those weeks were, were tough. Grabe yun. Remember that at the end? Galit na galit tayo forget. lahat. How could I forget? That was an in day. Um, and well, it was night. It wasn't even a whole day. It was like a couple of hours into the night. After. Yeah. Yep. It was in the middle of the week when that happened. And then, boom. Parang all hell broke loose talaga. But, I, I mean, to answer the question, um, they said kasi, uh, during the time that they were trying to put it back, so there were three doctors on me. Wow. One pulling my arm, my forearm, one pulling the tip of the finger, and then one putting it back in. And I guess I, I, I came from training and everything, and they said my adrenaline was so high. And siyempre, from the shock, siguro, my adrenaline was so high that the anesthesia wouldn't work. And it and kasi Dokkan last was in St. Luke's. And we we came we were from we came from Ateneo. So to medyo tumigas na siya. Um it's very basically it's very hard to put back. Because there were so many factors. And I was screaming in the ER. Pro- people probably thought I got shot or something from the amount of games that I was I was in. Kasi my my tito was there. Sabi niya kahit hanggang sa labas ng ER naririnig daw ako. Because every time they, I mean, I wouldn't really feel anything, but I guess it was just like the like the horror of seeing it. So I would scream so much, and we we it took four tries before they got to put it back. And then on the fourth try, they were not able to put it back. Now we have to go into surgery, and if we do, if you go into surgery, um, you won't be able to come back. Because I would tell them to stop. So that's what they told me. We have to be able to put it back na talaga. So you can't tell us to stop because it, and it's your only chance to be able to go back to, if you're even able to go back. So yun, they did. And then um, a week later, they took out the stitches. And then wala, I, I really went to therapy right away. And then I don't know what the thought process was if Coach Ty really said na parang has to come back. Because I felt naman kaya without me. Eh. They were strong naman eh. <laughs> but, um, but then yun, um, they said, he, I think we really bargained and Doc and La said, sige, kayaan natin in two weeks. So basically, Anton, we just taped the whole thing. Not just you one know? finger, two, two hands, diba? Yeah, it had to be kabit to this eh, para meron siyang yeah. source of strength. But basically, yun yung ginawa namin. We just taped it hard, as in like ang kapal ng tape na yun. And then, um, basta we waited, I know we, all we waited for was for the wound to heal. Because it's very small naman eh. So, ang wound inside healed, according to Doxy. So, once that was there, he was like, go na, sumabak ka na. So, wow. uh, even me, I was in shock. Even me, I was in shock. I didn't know I was gonna train um, until the night before. And I said, go na. And then, yun. 
Um, ang pinakaunang pinagawa sa akin ni Coach Tay fa- uh, was to block. <laughs> para daw mawala eh. Para daw masanayin ako kagad sa pain. So, kasi the first the first time I would do it, I would instinctively go one hand eh. So, kasi sa takot, diba? Yeah, yeah. Until, you know, he would just... You know, Wow, well, that's a crazy Wala, story. I don't know. That's a crazy story. I mean, imagine if they weren't able to put it put it back in. Hindi ka makakalaro. And who knows what would have happened that season. And like, I, I disagree. They really just said go. <laughs> Be, I respectfully disagree though because you were a starter your whole UAP career. They they needed you. And like, you were a big piece yeah. of that that 16 and all. So, <laughs> it, it was meant to be that you went back. That you were able to somehow... <laughs> miraculously come back in two weeks. Crazy. Uh, I also know, because I, I came back La Salle Ateneo, second round. That yeah. was the first game yeah. I played after. Damn. So Yun I guess pa. it's a big game. Na pressure, <laughs> na pressure si Coach Tai. Wow. I think. Because we were already, that was the, I'm pretty sure that was the last game of the, of the regular games. Eh. So we probably had the streak, obviously we had the streak going for us. Would have probably the pressure of go, making the sweep no, then was there. So I'm, yeah. imagine, like, uh, th- this is what uh, people on the outside don't see the sacrifices that you guys have to go through to be able to achieve what, what you guys achieved. Wow. Pero grab yun. They literally just said, Sigela ruana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do, I, do I have a choice? Yeah, grabe, grabe, I grabe, guess. Grabe. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bay, we know you are one of the fiercest competitors. Kahit sa team, eh, medyo competitive ka eh. Within the team and in training. But who are the players that challenge you to, you know, perform a little higher? Is it like a competitor or a teammate? Ako, within the team, your batch, definitely. Um, with you, Ate Els, Ate Lai, Kiwi, um, they made everything look so easy and I hated it at the time. I hated not in a bad way, yeah, but it was really like, is Coach Tai giving them an easy time or are they just that good na? Alam mo yun, you know that feel, you know, because as a rookie, you're like, my gosh, but ang hirap-hirap. But to them, it looks so easy talaga. And I was really like, like, oh my gosh, why can't I? I mean, in my head, it's like, okay, ito ha, walang, medyo mayabang yung train of thought, pero I think naman okay lang rin. I would really say, Parang gano'n naman yung ginagawa ko. Pero ba't parang ang hirap for me? <laughs> so, so, as in like from ball control to, to probably my footwork or whatever or like um, bringing where the ball is, like controlling my spikes. You know, I'd see Atelay and it looks so easy for her. Like, like spiking in different directions. It'd be like, in my head, it's like, I would just use it talaga and say, kaya, feel ko naman kaya ko rin yan. Alam mo yun, like, that's really all I would say. Kasi when you look at them and they think you'd literally be dead on the side, like, gasping for air. That's no joke, ha? After one man, you'd literally be gasping for air in the side. Tapos nakaluhod ka pa dun. And they would ju- be so, enjoy pa nga sila, may time pa silang tumawa. <laughs> so, I'd, I, wala. For me, I'd just like, be like, okay, um, I, I see Coach Tai naman, it's no different. So in my head, I think like, I guess they're just that one. Either they're just that used to it, and two, they're really just that good now. Because obviously I'm a rookie, so sh- sh- clearly I'm not on the same level yet. So in my head, all I just wanted to do was be on their level of of chill in training. That was really my goal. Because grabe talaga nito kung makita mo parang tawa tawa pa sila, tas tangi pa sila kay coach tay kasi ang dali dali na for them. Tas kami parang lahat ng sign up the cross sa gilid, parang Parang, oh my gosh, ito na. It's the bane of my existence. So, wala. Yun lang. Yun lang yung naging motivation ko, no? Na parang, kaya, I think, as in like, that's what, that's what was going on lang. Kaya, fa- feeling ko naman, kaya ko yun. Yun lang. Yun lang talaga. I was the same when I was a rookie. Kasama ko sila Phil, yeah. sila Z. I'm like, we're doing this really hard. Yung, ang tawag doon, poles. Mm. Like, I, feel, I felt like I was going fast now, but then I, I, I just couldn't keep up. It's the same with you, babe. <laughs> Parang, kaya ko naman. I think I'm doing the same thing as they are, but they make yeah. it look easy. And it like, comes with the, yeah, it comes with being, like, you know, medyo mayabang and stubborn athlete that everyone innately is. Na parang when coaches you, na parang, parang I was doing it right naman. 
parang ganon de ba so ev- yeah. and then eventually you, you still take it in and you're like you're more conscious of it just because pinex ka mm-hmm. so I guess from there you know you improve talaga but then that was really my like oh my gosh bakit sa kanila ang dali dali <laughs> Well, then just said it. She had to. She had to struggle in the beginning, and like they had one year of training under Coach Tai, and then you came in. It was your turn to experience it for the first time. <laughs> so 2015, you came in. That was your rookie year. But as early as 2015, you also got a taste of what it was like to play for the country in the under 23, and mm. then also in the in the Sea Games in in Singapore 2015. You you were part of the team, Bea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, tell us about that experience. Like, uh, uh, as early as your rookie year, you got the experience playing for the country. I think for me, that journey also was was just all shocking to me. It happened so fast. Like, right after you up, they just said, okay, two-week vacation for you guys. You go back to training. And I was really like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> of course, you know, you're a kid. That was 2015. I was so young. Yeah. I was 19, 18, siguro. And, you know, you, as a kid, you'd also just be like, oh, like, I want a vacation. So when they said that, you know, that was the point of me saying like, oh my gosh, this is an actual, like, this is an actual <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it. Well, I think ultimately it was very. It was the most humbling experience getting to play, um, on an international stage. Because you know, coming off of a championship, as a rookie, mm. you're at a high, de ba? And I rode off of their success. Uh, you know, so hindi ako nakatikim ng talo, alam yeah. yun. So, yeah. so for me, for me, I was like. The, you know, that's how you feel like you are. <laughs> parang, I'm just, I, kaka champion ka lang. They made me go to under 23. Like, ang galing ko. That, that's really how it will be in your head, especially at that age when you don't know how to manage. When you don't know how to manage what's there, diba? And then you go there and then you're like, oh my God, you are a dot. <laughs> or a dot in the spectrum. Oh. You're a dot in the spectrum. And then here, like, whoa, you're so tall. Then you get there and you're like, all right. Because really? under 23 <laughs> isn't just Southeast Asia, the right? there's uh, There was yeah. China there. There was China, <laughs> Thailand, and all of them. And you're just like, ah, teka. <laughs> Baka maglibero na ako dito. <laughs> you know, there was so much to learn. And... And there was so much. Well, you just really realized, like, wow, and dami mo pa palang hindi alam. So it, it ultimately it was a humbling experience for me, um, and uh, um, a curveball throw to say na parang hey, you have to grow up. Na okay, this isn't just for fun anymore, talaga. Um, you know, it's a career, it's a responsibility, it's something you really have to dedicate yourself to. It really comes with sacrifices and. Yeah, and ultimately, there was so much to learn. Talaga. Speaking of, you know, so much to learn and sacrifices, in the three years that Atenea did not win the title in the UAAP, what were the biggest lessons that you learned despite, you know, not achieving the goal of the team? Um, for me, kasi at the time, those three years, except for the fourth year, no nag third kami. The, the, the two years, um, nothing against the Lasala. They, did, they deserved much of it. Obviously, they won it, right? But for me, we could have at least had a better chance or maybe, I don't know, maybe nakasungkit pa kami in sana. In my opinion, they just, wala na yun, tagal na Pero, syempre, as a player, you'd still look back. Parang siguro it would have been a better chance or maybe ma- nakakuha pa kami ng isa doon. If, when, when my biggest learning was if, um, the whole team was um, within one mindset. Because mm-hmm. it was very hard. Eh. Um, that was my biggest learning talaga from that. Um, it was very, very hard. I think we were all in different phases of our lives. Guilty, including me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was very hard. Kasi, and it, it was very, very hard to communicate. Um, we were seeing, I think at the time, we were feeling the effects of not being able to communicate well with Coach Tai. It's very, very hard na and very, very taxing. Because at first, it, wor- it will work, eh, diba? You know, because um, he really brought in a new level of volleyball. 
into the country. So people had to catch up to that. But Ramil, Coach Ramil, being Coach Ramil, he caught up quick, um, skills level wise. So um, when Coach Tai, it was so evident that he would want to say something to us, but he had the smallest vocabulary that he wasn't able to put it through. Mm-hmm. And it was so you know uh, it was very hard to get the team all in one, all in one mindset. Because sometimes, given that part, you'd have different interpretations of what he wanted. So it was so, so, so hard to, to get the heads, to get everyone's heads together. Um, and it was a time where we were so fed up with volleyball in general. Because it was, it, was, it was twice a day for how many years na, patayan every day. And we were so exhausted. So it was very, very hard. Um, I, me personally, I was at a phase na parang I was really questioning my life decisions. <laughs> and drastic, eh, no? Pero parang in my head, it's like, why am I doing this to my life? Like, every day na lang. And then, like, you see all of your other friends. You know, having fun, having the college fun that a typical, like, a, that a usual um, person at my age would have. So for me, I was at that phase eh, that I was in denial of the fact that volleyball was my life and that I had to love it as much as it, it was coming to me, diba? So I was at that phase personally talaga na parang, ah, bakit ko ba ito ginagawa? And I hated it. So I showed up to training just to show up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and everything was so routinely na I personally wasn't doing anything to up my level on an individual scale. I just followed whatever Coach Tai did. And at that point, I just sanay na ako sa pinapagawa ni Coach Tai. So, you know, I, there was always that will to win. But my head, personally, my head wasn't at the right head space. So it was, so that's what the, when I realized, you know, it took more than just skill. You know, you, literally, you really just didn't have to be, you know, the spikers or the best diggers. It didn't matter if you were number one on all of those stats. But winning a championship took more than that. So um, that, that was really the biggest learnings for me. That learnings. That was really the biggest learning for me um, um, within those three years. That um, character, talaga, um, attitude. You know, the, the intangibles mm-hmm. was 50% of the factor. You know, skills could only give you, uh, can only get you so far. But really, the ultimate... Um, Thing that will win you a championship would be would be your character not only as an individual but as a team and you had to form that um together wow Bea, i have to commend you for being honest about it because you know you know sometimes it's because of your pride and because you don't want to show any weakness you don't want to admit what you felt went wrong but for you to to look back and you know, maybe we could have got one more if, if we were on the same level. Maybe if I didn't get so burnt out. So, I mean, I got to commend you for that. And, and guys, yung course ni Bea, hindi biro, ah. uh, AB economics? Oh my God. Management <laughs> economics. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so Coach O comes in. Maybe you needed a breath of fresh air, you know, a new voice. <laughs> Coach O comes in and uh, he makes you team captain. Like, was that maybe the, the sh- like, like, ikaw naman yun na shook. Maybe th- that's what you needed. Maybe you needed, you know, somebody r- to rock your world. <laughs> First of all, Coach O, if you watch this, di ako sure kung applicable yung breath of fresh air. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you've been he- you've been you've been hearing him already <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> new voice, new voice, totoo yun, one hundred percent. But new not voice. breath of fresh air. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, he he knows. I always make him a sorry, anyway, but he knows I have much respect for him. Um, but um, when he made me team captain, when he did that, because. Uh, well, Coach O naman kasi talaga goes into something and has everything so well thought of. So when he took the job, I'm pretty sure he already had it laid out. Because at the time when he was announced coach of the women's team, I, I technically wasn't there. Mm. Um, I was still playing for NPSL and Photon. And I had, I was still in my, it took a while. I was still in my mindset of 
do I want to play my fifth year? But I, in the back of my head, I knew I did. Naman. I knew I was. But I, in my head, I, 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 I kind of took that break from Ateneo Volleyball just to, just to feel the fact that I actually had the option to play my fifth or not. Parang he wanted to just be in control. Mm. You know, that, that was my feeling then. So, um, when, he called, when he finally called me up, because he was assembling the team, when he finally called me up and said, okay, this is my plan for the team, um, you're going to be my team captain along with you as Maddie. Um, and, you know, you, you had, we had pretty much equal shares of the job. Um, just in a very, in just di- different execution lang. So, um, when, when, you know, when he said that, I said, uh, well, this guy clearly already has something in his mind, you know, and it's not just him saying na parang, ah, sige, si- senior sila, sila na. So, you know, the, I, dun pa lang when he was talking to me, I was like, okay, I think we're in, we're in, we're in good hands. Because as much as he's just on the other side of the court, we barely get to interact with him because we're stuck in our, our side of the court. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yun, um, when he said that, um, I, me being me, I, I, I was very much up for taking the role. So, no problem with me. I think I, I at the time, I think naman I had the capabilities na of, of leading the team and I had the will, at least, that was the mo- um, more important thing to me, you know, the, the will to, to take on the responsibility and take on the extra load on my shoulders to hopefully, at that time, you know, hopefully be able to lead them to, to the goal of, of what we wanted back then. So, yeah, it was, for me, my pleasure to do it when he asked me. Ruby, it takes a while, a long while, for a team to you know, get used to a system of a new coach learn yung ideals and philosophy, especially in kay Coach O. Mm. Like coming from Coach Tay na, you know, he doesn't say much. Yeah. You kind of get it. But iba kasi si yeah. Coach He's on a different level when it comes to yung mga ganyan. Mm-hmm. Um, during this time, you had less than a year to prepare for the UAAP. And as team captain, and you said it earlier na, it's important for a team to be on the same page. Because that mm-hmm. that's what gets you to the next level, not just skills, diba. How did you manage to get everyone on the same page, given that you had to, you know, relearn everything with Coach O? Well, it, it took a lot of working with Coach O, talaga. Um, and he took his time. Binawi niya yung, yung less than one year na yun. Binawi niya yun, believe me. Um, <laughs> we would end training at 8. We would be dismissed by 8. 45 9 because he'd talk and give us lectures on that long on how he wanted it. <laughs> oh my god, he, I think you guys all know he can go on long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His huddles he are can like go a buffet. On the whole day that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. endless. But so, yeah, he, he really took his time with every training. Imagine we'd train six to ten. At it. We'd train six to ten in the morning, our call time would be at three in the afternoon. All the way until eight or nine. Na. Maaga na sa amin yung eight. And halu yun, halu yun ng skills, halu yun ng literally anton at then in the middle of training, when we're not doing a drill right or when he sees our attitude just isn't right, he would pause and would cut training and wouldn't care. Yung wala siyang pa kiko ano nangyayari. Um, and 30 minutes will stop training just so he'd, he'd lecture. So, mga ganun. Ganun talaga yung mga eksenahan namin. Nun. So, it took a lot of that and really absorbing and listening to him. Kasi chinaga niya naman kami in fairness naman to Coach O despite um, the fact that we were complaining. It was so long and so unnecessary at least for us at the time. But that's how we felt, di ba? Kasi ang tagal talaga. Um, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was needed um, for us to be able, for us to kind of Para mahabol namin yung goal namin. So we were very far. Like, imagine nga, at the time when we started, we were still all in a different headspace. Until, you know, onti-onti namin ako yung system niya. And he, he, he he's a talker eh. So talaga, he would call you at night. He would, he would text you a lot. And then just tell you what he wanted from you. But that's the good thing about it. He was able to communicate well. And extensively. <laughs> um your role in the team. So he would, he really wanted something to happen. Um, and he would tell you, he wouldn't just be like, 
ah, tingnan natin kung gagawin niya. So, there are some people like that, and diba, na parang, dapat alam niya na yan. No, he would really take the time and say, this is what I wanted to do. And he would make sure that every person from the second six to the first six would know their role in the team. So, yun, you know, once you know your role in the team, it, it becomes smaller and it becomes more doable in your head. That it, it's a lot easier to get, to group everyone together already. So, it, it took a lot of communications and a lot of back and forth. And um, aligning also with with my batchmates. At the time, it was me, Kim, me, Kim, Kat, and Maddie. And all four of us, you know, we, we always had to be on the same page. Um, walang kontrahan ng isa't isa. You know, those things. We had to lay the, that foundation down um, with the help of Pongay and Pongay, Jules, and Danny um, from the lower batches. So, yun, I, I think it nagkat on then that we were so tired of losing. Mm-hmm that we really wanted we want we were willing to do everything and anything and open our heads and our hearts to to really admit the fact that we had to do something and we had to change so yun it was a collective it was a collective effort talaga um from the whole team and and nagkataon din talaga na you know our our want and our will to become a champion again really flowed down to everybody. So that's what we wanted lang kasi talaga to project it. That we wanted it so much more this time. It was more than just, you know, the past years na parang, ah, yeah, I want to be a champion. This was, we were really doing something about it. So yun, I think that was the storyline of, of that. And very thankful for the team who matured with us um, to, to get the goal done. Okay. Um, I feel like with everything that you just explained, it sets things up for my next question, which is kind of a controversial one. And I'm not asking this because I want to open up old wounds. I'm asking this because I feel like maybe you did not get a chance to defend yourself during that time because you were just so focused on the task at hand, which was to win a championship. There was that second round matchup against UST, the infamous (laughs) Isapa moment. And... You know, people on social media, people who are on the outside looking in, not really understanding what's going on on the inside, are very quick to judge. That's the world we live in today. And you guys mm-hmm. being public figures, you're, you're subject to those types of criticism. But when I watched it again, you guys were about to get swept. And you were just talking about you had to do something. You had... And you were the team captain. Like I was telling Dan, if you did not speak up, eh, baka na sweep pa kayo ng UST. You guys ended up winning that game. I mean, when I was watching that that game again, sabi ko, if Bea did not do that, if Bea did not stand up and like speak up for the team, eh, baka tuluyan natalo yung Ateneo, di ba? And you guys ended up winning that match, taking the next three steps. So, I mean, like, looking back at that infamous Isapa moment, like, um, what do you say to the people who, like, misunderstood you and were quick to judge based on what they saw instead of looking at it from your perspective? Obviously, they, they won't fully understand because, you know, they'll never be in your shoes. But, like, what do you have to say about that moment? Hmm. Well, first of all, now talaga, when we, when we look back after a few games out down the road talaga, we said, buta talaga we won. Because the standings yeah. could have been oh. completely different if we didn't win that game. And it could have been a whole different story talaga. So, um, well, at the time, I just didn't want to lose. Um, and what was going in my head was two consecutive calls yon mm-hmm. na... na one was touch net ni Dina, and then the second one was wrong rotation. Dun, yung wrong rotation, dun ako, I, that's when I went crazy. <laughs> um, but kasi, I, the game before that was UP. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was collectively mad na kasi. Parang collectively like, inis na. Kasi I remember the game before that was UP. And um, I think it was 24 all. Basta crucial, crucial point din yun eh. Um, and then, um, it was one of either stepping ata si Tots. What was a violation that UP committed? And one of those judgment calls then. 
Um, and I said, but di nyo kinol. And ang sabi sa akin no ref noon was, um, mom, crucial, let them play. So, so I said, okay, well, we still won the game. So, no harm done, whatever, okay na. So, I let it go. It's like, okay, so may ganun pala. Um, and then the next time was the UST game. Crucial. So, parang inis na inis lang, na inis ako with the fact na iba-iba yung directive ng ref. Mm-hmm. So, kaya ako na pikon. Kasi parang, ito naman, crucial. Tapos, simpleng, ay, lumagpas yung paa ni Dina or something like that. Kasi wrong rotation yun eh, di ba? Iko-call nyo. So, dun ako, dun ako na pikon na. Kasi parang, bakit iba-iba kayo? Yung isa, crucial, let them play. Yung isa, lahat, iko-call. Di ba? So, parang ako, parang get your head. Dun ako na, dun na talaga na-ignite yung, yung galit sa akin. And given the fact na yun nga, it was UST. Um, and in the UAAP, at least, we haven't lost to, to UST. So, alam na alam ko in my head na kayang-kaya dapat yan. And, the st- and, you know, that season was so close. was such a close fight mm-hmm. for everybody mm-hmm. that I knew every game na had, you know, may bearing talaga. And that was UST again, di ba? So, mm-hmm. and second round yun. So, it was a bigger statement to lose in the second round than in the first. Kasi after the first start, pwede mo sabihin, bawi lang eh. Mm-hmm. Yung second round, you lose. Iba yun eh. Iba yung magiging flow and mindset mo coming into semis and into finals. Knowing na kayang-kaya mo sila. Di ba? Mm-hmm. So, it, it, and at that time, wala. I just also wanted to win. Going back to just that moment, Mm-hmm. May inis ka lang. So, I, it was really just brought about all of the emotions. Na inis na inis ako. And then parang they made me go back and forth kasi, di ba? Mm-hmm. Nag-call yeah. yung second ref. So, I asked him, like, Kuya, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. He said, Ma'am, um, punta po kayo sa first ref. So, I go to the first ref and sa- the first ref says, ah, Ma'am, siya po yung nag-call. Punta po kasi sa kanya. So, I said, ano ba yan? <laughs> yeah. So, na- napikon lang talaga ako. So, um... I, yun, I just really wanted to win. And I guess if I didn't speak up at that time, you know, my teammates would have just been like, down ng moral eh. Yeah. So, you know, talking to them after that, I really asked them like, guys, mali ba yung ginawa ko? And then, you know, to them, syempre, they knew naman what I was fighting for eh. So to them, yeah. it's like, no, it's okay. We fully support yeah. you um, with, with what you did. Not to say that it's correct. Because even me, I would, that's the reason why I apologized to the ref was yeah. in my headset. I said, mm-hmm. I knew mm-hmm. I could have handled that better. Mm-hmm. You know, there were, there probably was a different way to to ignite the team and fight for the team. Um, so the, hence me apologizing to the ref. Yeah. Um, but you know, at that time, yun yung nangyari. So I mean, like you know, um, I never really seek naman to defend myself mm. from 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 the critics because um, I already knew that my team had my back. Mm. So that's the first thing I asked. Eh. Even coach, I said, mm. coach, mali ba yon? Because, sure. In any, ano naman na parang, coach, sorry. Nag-sorry talaga ako, even mm. to, the, to my team. Kasi, mm. you know, you're not just carrying your name, but Ateneos. Mm. Yeah. So, I really apologize naman. But then, I, then when they said, it's okay, um, we understand. We fully understand why that happened. Wala na siya sa akin. I didn't need to defend myself to anybody else, but my teammates and the people who mattered to me. So, wala naman siya. Wow. I mean, um, even it, at the den, I asked you, right? Yeah. Mm-mm, yeah. Like, at the den. Probably would have done parang off ba? Now, re- real talk though, s- if somebody had to stand up for your team, why not you? I mean, you're the team captain. Somebody had to do it, right? You guys were about to lose that game. And you were just talking about yeah, how yeah. crucial the, the whole season was. So, I mean, ako, when, when I watched it again, I said, Oh my God! I mean, everybody saw that isapa, but instead of, you know, seeing what was at stake, which was you know the game, you guys were trying to win the game, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, well, because it's really well. Imagine mo, hindi lang hindi lang talo yon eh. That would have been a three-zero sweep Mm-mm. game. Yeah. So I didn't want to lose. I really didn't want to lose. And like it's huge for the morale. Na nakabangon pa kayo after going down 2-0 and and sweeping the rest of the way. So I mean, that's mm-hmm. how I look at it. That's how, in in a way, you kind of saved the whole team. 
in that in that instance. That that's how I see it. But that's just me. Thank you. Turning yeah. point, definitely. Well, okay. turning point, yun, kasi right after that was was um was was a point on my end. Nagquick ako nun. Then right after that was an ace. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, na- talaga, naalala parang, mo pa. Naalala mo pa talaga. <laughs> I love that game. That's actually one of my favorite games. I love that game. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Then, you, classic. You know, bumangon kayo from, you know, 2-0. Yeah, yeah. Ateneo is known for that. Kahit, kahit nung time nyo din eh. Ateneo is known I for that. <laughs> Ateneo is known for, for coming back from deficits like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bay, you... Uh, Started your UAAP career with a champion, had three rough years, and then ending your career with a championship. What did it mean for you to be able to bring back the title to Ateneo? Ako, it meant so much to me, both on an individual level and a collective level of the institution. Um, on an individual sense, kasi, to be honest with you guys, when, when we won my first year, That's how I felt it. Kumbaga, nakiride ako sa success nila eh. Nila ate din, nila ate like. Kasi, kumbaga, there was already, everything was in place eh. So, kumbaga, nanalo ako. Kasi, andun ako. I mean, like, I, I didn't feel like, you know, like a critical piece of the puzzle for them to have achieved the championship. Parang get. So, um, I mean, though it was one of the best pa rin, di ba? It, 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 on an individual sense as an athlete, I felt na parang, I wanted to win again, especially after losing all those three years. I wanted to win again. Um, and obviously, nothing against Atilay. But I think she'll understand. You know, a post Eliza Valdez era. Mm-hmm. Diba? Because they won the championship first for Ateneo. And it hasn't been done outside of Atilay. So yeah. we wanted, you know, we wanted to be able to not naman prove, but even to ourselves, both to ourselves, you know, and the world na Ateneo has become Ateneo na because of these people, yes. Uh, but we'll also be able to do it without them na. But obviously because of them. Because we're still in the same line of success. Grab your line of success. But we were still in the same line, eh, diba? You yeah. know, so we were still under the same, uh, kumbaga, medyo same generation pa kami. But we wanted to be able to do it na without them. Because we, me as an athlete, you know, it was so easy for me at the time because eh, they were there to guide me, you know, to to be able to say na, ako bahala sa'yo. Because Atilay would really be like that. Sige lang, go, just do your job. Ako na bahala sa, for the rest. So, it would be, so, it was so easy for me as a rookie. Kung baga, nakuha ko yung championship na yun ng walang hirap. In that sense of responsibility, in sense of leadership, maturity, I didn't have to be mature at all to win that. So, coming into my fifth year, You know, you had to be somebody bigger. Eh? You were the, I was the captain. You know, we were the seniors. We, I personally, that that was my anorin. Now, part of my motivation was that I wanted na something like that to be able to give the school that, my team that, and myself that. You know, another championship because alam na naman namin na kaya na namin eh, because these people have laid out the foundation for it, and we wanted to prove it na na kaya na talaga and kaya namin individually and as a team. And you know, um, we wanted na to to bring back Ateneo to there. Na parang that wasn't just once. Kung bago ganon, hindi lang yun. That wasn't chamba for them. Na timing na Ate Lai, Coach Tai, Ate Den, Ate Else. It wasn't just that. You know, we, we wanted to make. Parang it, it was ano na like the the statement na Ateneo as a school already had a legacy. Yeah. Not beyond that. You know the magical run and the and the sweep, because that's the first two way, eh, of the school. Yeah. So now, mas sabi mo na na okay, it's an actual champion team na, it's a winning program. Yes. So dun mo na siya ma dun dun mo na siya nakuha na, kasi na nakuha na namin ulit. Mm-hmm. That's how big it meant to us, both again individually and and as as an institution. And I'm sure it, it was so fulfilling because that was not an easy championship. I mean, in the final four, you were up against FEU, an FEU team that eliminated you guys the previous year, and they beat you. It was an elimination game. So, and then, you know, you survived that, and then you go to game number one in the finals, and UST wins. And we lost again. 
Diba? So, so, I mean, it, it was, uh, it was uh, tough. I mean, you had to earn it. You had to earn it. Uh, it, was, it was not handed to you. So, yung mga really sinabi mo, wasn't. it really wasn't talaga. Kaya yung mga sinabi mo na, oh, Lai was, Ate Lai was there, Ate Den was there. This championship, you know, was really sweet because you had to work for it talaga. And it's, Extra hard. And, and it's not easy, like, to win a championship, like, with, under a first-year coach, di ba? Mm-hmm. Adjusting mm-hmm. on the fly. Okay. Um, Bea, you're one of the most popular players in, like, regardless of sport, in the whole country. Um, and even there, even though there's no TMZ here in the Philippines, like anything that you do, like <laughs> you know, get get people react right away. Like makita ka lang na na sa crowd, tapos hinag mo si Thirdy Ravenna. People are gonna assume, like, st- <laughs> di, di ba? So like, uh, I remember, meron ka pang interview with Tito Boy. He was asking you about that, Tito Boy Abunda. So like, how does somebody as popular like you like have a life? Like you know, how, how can you how can you like go out with somebody and get to know somebody without without people like assuming like oh may something but or you know ha, ha, like how do you manage that like I can't I can't imagine. <laughs> um, well, because uh, actually I'm already a very private person, eh. yeah. so honestly. The people that the things that the people see from me are things that they'll see only on social media. Mm. So um, the things that happen in my life are very very private, and I like I like to keep it that way. So mm. you know the people who would know me talaga at the den and all my other friends would know there's a very different um, bea outside of social media, and there's a there's a different aspect to me, and there there's a different thing that's going on in my life. So you know I I really just manage to keep it private. Like in that sense that, and I keep my circle close. I think that's the most important part, talaga. So these people, um, you know, are the only ones who know my 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 story or what's 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 really happening or what's the latest sa buhay ko. Ganun. So you know, yon, I, first of all, hindi talaga ako post. So, um, you know, people can really assume whatever they want, and I really don't mind, naman. Um, I think it comes with the responsibility, um, um. Of of what we, of what we have na you know as an athlete and with given that it's given us a platform a bigger platform, and it comes with it. So you know um you take it as it is and that's just the way it is sometimes. So you know I just take it with a grain of salt na parang I don't ganyan na yun eh. So um when it comes to meeting new people you know I'm very lucky naman that you know because I, I meet people through my circle of friends. Mm. So it wouldn't really matter to them if it I were like. Be a delay on the athlete, you know. So you know, that's how you know, naman, who your true friends are, the right? So, so um, yeah, uh, I, I really just take it with a grain of salt and and everything else that comes with it. I don't, I, I, I don't even read stuff anymore and stuff like that. And the third and I just laugh about it honestly because we don't even know how it started. Because <laughs> um, we were never a thing at all, the right? so, And we were like, the first thing, I guess, the first boy they saw me photographed with, I guess, lalo na, it's 3D pa, siguro. That's just how it happened. So, okay lang rin naman. Um, it's funny sometimes. Sometimes it's source of entertainment pa for everybody. So, why not, right? So, go lang. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was. That's, mean, an, that's an understatement. <laughs> source of yeah. entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, eh, legit, because even my family, even my own family would really ask, like, you know, like distant relatives who haven't seen me, like, oh, it's true, ba? Na ano? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you have it, talaga, kasi. But it's a real like, family. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, my gosh, guys, family na nga ako. Tapos, pag kailangan yung pakonto na yun. But then, like, you, you know, it's it's okay. It it comes with it. Eh. That's really just how I take it. Um, mm. if people say anything, mm. spread anything. For as long as the people I love, the people I know, the people who know me, um, know the truth, and you know. We're still, I'm still, you know, um, okay to them. Then I'm okay. It's it's really fine, the man with me. Okay. It comes with it, eh, the ano, of social media. Mm. So. Yeah, it comes with the territory. Yeah, it's really okay, the man. Um, wow. for as long as, but I only get affected, the man, when it's my family who they, who they criticize them. But if it's me, mm. by all means, go lang, the man. Um, comes with it. You know, Anton, Bea has like 
different dimensions to her. You know? <laughs> not just an athlete, mm. not just a good daughter. She's a really good student. Mm. Ang sikat na mag-aral, gumawa pa siya ng master's degree. <laughs> Though she's still studying until now. Mm. Can you tell us more about yeah. that, day, your master's degree? And how are you coping with, you know, classes being conducted online? First of all, online classes suck. <laughs> not to discourage, <laughs> not to discourage <laughs> the students. Um, <laughs> not to discourage the students. You guys have to do it. You guys have to do it. So keep studying, even if it sucks. In my opinion, um, well, but because obviously, what I we've been I've been studying my whole life. And it comes in with the adjustment of what I've known is so different from online class, de ba? And then you're in master, so it's like a like a different level of thinking, and their expectation from you is very high. So you're just like, oh my goodness gracious! So and it comes with my actual style of learning, of listening to the prof. Mm-hmm. And now you're just reading it. Eh? You're just reading off of modules and stuff. So the nuances, you know, the discussion, I learned from discussions, you know, actual back and forth with the props. It was just very, very hard to cope talaga for me. And now you're stuck with YouTube videos na parang, di mo naman matatanong, parang, ano to? <laughs> <laughs> ba? Parang, and it's different when it's instantaneous, eh. Diba? Yeah. It's different when it's it's a live thing than just, I leave you a question and then you'll answer two days after. Yeah. Diba? So, parang it's very different because you're not in the moment na rin eh. Yeah. So, yun, it, it, it takes off, you know, the actual back-to-box. So, nahirapan talaga ako on that part of fully um, absorbing um, the lessons um, on in terms of online classes. But talking about my master's, I'm taking um, MSSM, so it's Master's in Sustainability Management. Again, as any part in my life, it's a meant to be kind of thing. So, because the story, the story of that was, um, I was, I did, I did four years meko, my undergrad, and I really wanted to be able to do it in four years because um, I wanted to be able to one have the option to play my fifth or not, and two have the option that I got to take masters. Because why not? The opportunity is there, right? And it's such a privilege um, to be able to to take it. And uh, you know, as a as a scholar, pa, because I was playing, so, de ba? It's an opportunity I shouldn't miss out on. So, um, taking my, I was already selecting my masters, and other than I had a pick up and taking med, but, kuru, bye. <laughs> um, um, I didn't know what to take. Um, but and I was gonna take the usual, uh, masters that pe- that we we take, which is communications. Um, so I was like, I, okay, I went to Ateneo and said, Sige, calm na. I was filling out my application. Like, Sige, calm na lang. I don't know what else had to take. Eh. Um, and then um, our, our, ano there, because uh, they really help us in the administration. So they said, um, Bakit ka magkukom? So I was like, Wala nang ebe. And then they said, Why don't you take this new thing? Isaac is also taking it. Um, and they said it's called sustainability management. And you know, obviously, the topic now, the topic of sustainability now is is very contemporary and very very important, especially today. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh yeah, yeah, that's something I'm actually interested in. Um, so you know, as you guys know, sustainability doesn't just talk about the environment, but it's a balance of the environment, of governance, and still profit. So you know, um, it's a good balance. I love it in that sense that it puts everything into proper perspective of hey, you don't have to sacrifice the environment or good governance to be able to, to make a good profit or have good profit mar- margins. And, you know, to actually just be able to execute that um, is a very big thing, I think. And it's very much needed in the world, in the bigger context of the world today. So um, that's, that's what I'm taking now. And uh, I'm on my way to taking my comprehensive exam. So I'm almost done, I think. Mm-hmm. So I finished my subject. So all I have to do now, but it's the hardest part, is the comprehensive exam and my thesis, which is individual. So um, hopefully, matapos ko, you know. But throughout the the time of me taking it, again, I had different phases of I just want to play, but again, I'm still a student athlete. So it's it's an up and down journey for me of questioning again my life decisions of why am I here. <laughs> um, but yeah, but. 
more than anything, I love it and I'm grateful for the new things I've learned. It's a very different perspective because more than anything, sustainability is fine. That top mind that it, um it's being able talaga to balance all of these elements. Because now, because you know, people think very we're trained to think very linear. Sustainability trains you to think both linear and in a very complex system of things because now you really have to understand the fact that everything's connected to everything. You do one thing and it affects a million other things. Right? So it, it teaches you to manage those things. So I'm, I'm very, very excited, hopefully, to be able to apply it um, in the future. Well, listening to you, Bea, it seems that you really do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> and good Maybe luck. I just good luck. Well. <laughs> yeah, you do. You really do. You really do. Okay. Um, you were at, at that historic meeting where they announced that the Premier Volleyball League would turn pro. Uh, you mm-hmm. represented your team, Chocomucho. So how do you think this affects the whole volleyball landscape? I mean, you were there. Um, how did it feel that you, know, you were part of history and hopefully soon you guys can get back on the court to compete as professionals? Aho, for me, it's it's a huge deal talaga for the volleyball scene. Kasi, for, kasi the, how it started was vol- playing volleyball, playing commercial volleyball was for some of the athletes had to be a side thing. You know, so on top of an actual job, on top of an, a day job, they would train right after um, to get the, the needed income to boost, you know, um, to be able to run their household and whatnot. Um, again, ako, lucky na ako that at the time I came in, malaki na siya. But that's how it started, eh, diba? Um, people still had day jobs and would go go to volleyball, just like a student athlete, diba? So parang hindi na nag-end yung journey nila na they had to balance two things. Now, being professional, that you have a minimum cap salary um, and all of these things are in place na parang this could really be your stable job because it won't, it actually won't allow you, if I'm not mistaken, it won't allow you to take an actual a full-time job in the URLs because this is your actual full-time job because yeah, you have, a, have a contract and everything. Um, so, you know, it, I'm, I couldn't be happier for, for the athletes talaga. Um, for, for the athletes also who, who, not, who not only plays because of passion, but because this is their bread and butter. You know, and they can actually make it their bread and butter now. You know, and make something you're so passionate about, and make it your source, your source of income, and your actual living, your career, diba? So yeah. for me, that's one of the biggest things it brought to the world of volleyball. Na right, you can concentrate on it. You know, you you can really make this your life, na talaga. And that's huge, Anton. So like, imagine the security mm. you can feel. Na hey, I can focus on one thing, mm. diba? You know, and volleyball can be my main thing because it's what I love. It can actually be my main thing. And some other things can be like on the side na lang. And it's not the other way around. So I think that's, you know, the, the, beyond the, the, the prestige that comes with it. Um, I think that's one of the more important things that it, it, it brought now to, to the volleyball athletes. Right. And it brings more, you know, stability and security, not just for us players, but also, you know, everyone else involved, like coaches. Yes, yes, especially the coaches also. So it's it's huge for us, and we're really lucky na abutan pa natin sa, you know, sa lifetime. <laughs> true, 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 true. So next na lang is, you know, when can we start playing? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, you haven't played an official match in more than a year. Magta two mm-hmm. years na, di ba? Yeah, yeah. So how pumped are you to get back on the court? <laughs> My, you know I text you all the time. <laughs> As in like, <laughs> not, not legit, then. legit. I'm really so excited to just be back um, on the competitive court. Because, I mean, honestly, one of the reasons why I love playing sports in general is because, you know, when you're on the court, you can see me naman, di ba? Parang, I don't care. I'm me. Yeah. <laughs> I am as passionate as I can be. I will scream my lungs out. I will, I will pour my heart out. I will cry. I will, I will scream. I will laugh with no shame. And I love it. 
you know that's the reason why I love playing and for that to be taken away from you one from injury two then a pandemic so you just like so parang alam mo yung alam mo yung term na kating katika na to to get that back to get that feeling back and, you know more than more than the actual playing of volleyball it's that feeling that it gives me that I really want to get back into and you know just the grind nakakamish eh you know the the parang anjan lang yung headspace mo uh, even at the then no so I, I took an LOA for next sem because I wanna so there are there are ano diba there the supposedly there's a bubble in April for us mm, yeah. I wanna just be there because <laughs> I'm so like I hmm, I can't even hmm, I can't even <laughs> wanna play <laughs> I just I just wanna get back on the court talaga and you know just feel that again na parang I'm 100% unguarded and and get to play the sport with the people I love, you know, my teammates, Sina Atadel and um, Kat, Maddie, we're still together. And I just love to share the court again with them. It's so exciting for me. And, you know, just to see me play again. Um, it's been very tough. Um, going through an injury always has you thinking now, you know, what if I can ever do the same things? Um, so, I still don't know, um, but I'm I'm confident na, you know, I, I hopefully can even if not get to the same level hopefully the goal is to even be better than that so um i'm hoping for i'm hoping for a second wind as what they call it um that's that's really my goal um in the coming years hey have you guys been to inspire the the sports academy where they plan to have the pvl bubble not yet it's super nice not i was even. i was there for 2 weeks and it's state of the art i as in yung sinasabi mo bea na Gusto mo yun lang yung focus mo. Yun talaga yung mangyayari once you get there to the bubble. So I'm excited for you guys and I really hope na matuloy. Fingers crossed. Um, Bea, what's your message to all the fans who for sure kating kating na rin sila to, to see you guys play? What, what do you have to say to all of them who are just at the edge of their seats waiting for you guys to get back on the court? Well, right now to the fans just as you guys were patiently waiting. For, for it to happen. But hopefully, once it does, you know, magkikita kita tayo doon virtually. And um, hopefully, um, they, they, they're there to support us. Because honestly, one of my favorite things playing is the crowd. Mm. I love it. Mm. <laughs> you know, once they start, once they start screaming, it's the best, diba? It gives you such a high, talaga. So, yeah. it's like a movie. Once they're involved, once the crowd is involved. Well, now, of course, it's a different scale. It's, it's a virtual crowd. But, um, I hope they're there to support it and I hope um, na um, may enjoy ulit namin together ang volleyball. So that's that's really it and I hope again they still continue to stay safe and stay um, and stay at home um, and really just hopefully my biggest wish is to see everybody again soon. Kahit gano ka kulit yung iba naming fans. And I know <laughs> I know some of them eh. No, but you you get you get close to some of them because you see them so much. They really don't miss games. So yeah. you guys, of how cool you guys are, na miss ko talaga sila and and I hope to see them soon. What about teaming up with Dan? What can you say about that? I mean, you guys won a championship, ah. sixteen and oh Now try try to achieve the same success on the pro level. That's another thing that parang ando ne teammates sa kami it's been yeah, pandemic. Yeah. So we were we were so pumped to be back together. It's like oh and then <laughs> the pandemic. So you know um I mean like I loved I've always loved sharing the court with Ate Den and it's been a while. Um you know when she gets on court she has she has a she has a different look in her eyes. So I miss that and I I I would love to be on the same side of that. You know Ate Den Lalaglag eh. She has sly, she has sly angas eh, diba? Yung parang papalakpak in the middle of the court. I would just love to see it. Because I love the energy. Because, you know, she's she's just as, I guess it's not as, ano, because she, she's libero, diba? So she, she she doesn't get to attack or doesn't get to finish the point in that mm. sense. So yeah. it's not as seen. Oh, but if you're on, you were with her on court, it's like, whoo, the best, talaga. Yeah. The energy that she brings, the passion and the fierceness also that's there. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to share that again. I agree with my I, energy, ni Coach O. <laughs> mm, mm, I, 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 I agree with the sly angas, though, Bea. 
That, I, I like how you put it. <laughs> Sly ass. Yeah. People Sly would ass. know. People would know. <laughs> If you know, you know. Yeah, and she has yeah. she has that look, the right? You know, when she's about to receive a ball or a dig, she just has that look. And then when you kill a ball out of her good receive, and she gives you a high five. Mm. It's a good feeling. We <laughs> to high five you again. I mean. Yeah, funny you know for first year, because I was so I'm so passionate, de ba? So I would high five her, and it's super lakas. And she'd be like, "Baby, what's up?" I think the client sa kamo one time. All good, babe. All good. Parang naalala ko ngayon na gumanon ka. Well, Bea, like we said, um, we didn't want to start recording new episodes this year if it wasn't you, and the worth the the wait was worth it. The wait was worth it. That, 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 that's all I gotta say. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thanks again for having me. Thank I you enjoyed so much. Our, our kwentuhan. Naging kwentuhan eh, no? <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's what we wanted. Thank you for indulging us with your stories, and I'm sure maraming fans, mo, volleyball fans, ang natuwa with everything that you shared. They, they learned more about you, and we did too. So I hope that you're gonna do well with, the, of course, your thesis. Your <laughs> exam can't forget about that and of course you you know road back to playing again thank you thank you can't wait to win a championship with you wow declaring it uh, declaring it here uh. <laughs> yeah we Shepard, that's <laughs> the goal <laughs> diba? i mean why else why else we end it did you want to win i like it i like it has I like to happen it. Yeah. Has so to happen. it has to happen Hey, to the fans, we made it happen here on Volleyball DNA. Most requested guest, BDL. We got it done. And it's also Dan Dan's birthday. <laughs> so happy birthday yeah, to Dan. Happy birthday episode. Thank you. And thank, thank you, everybody, you. for supporting the show in 2020. And we have a lot more in store for you in 2021. And let's all pray that these girls can get back on the court. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.